Hello friends, we are getting bees. Honey bees that make beautiful, delicious Alaskan honey. Did you know that honeybees do not occur naturally in Alaska? We have bumblebees, we have wasps, but if you see a honeybee in Alaska, it has been imported here. but we do have a thriving community of honeybee beekeepers. And once you've tried your own honey from your honeybees, you cannot go back to store-bought processed honey. These two jars of honey are from two previous years when we have done bees. It has actually been a few years. We did not do them the last, I think, at least two summers, but we decided to do them again. But look how different these two jars of honey are. This is 2020's honey. It has crystallized, it is delicious, but it's very yellow. And this is another year's honey, and it's more of an amber color. Just depends on water content, what things were in bloom when they were making the honey, but all of it tastes amazing. And that is why we have decided to do honeybees again. So you might be wondering, where do we get honeybees since they don't occur here naturally? Well, about two months ago, I went online to a local honeybee distributor and ordered some bees. They are very expensive. They have gone up in price over the past several years dramatically. I wrote a check for $450 for two beehives worth of bees to be shipped up from California. After ordering the bees several months ago, it kind of went to the back of my mind and I haven't thought about it much since. This year, the delivery of bees kept getting pushed back and back and back and they could never give us an actual date of when the bees were gonna be delivered because there was so much extra rain and precipitation in California where these bees are coming from. They were not sure when the bees would arrive. Two days before they were delivered, we finally got notice that they were coming. That meant that we needed to give our neglected hives some major attention. Like I said before, we haven't done bees for a few years, so the hives were sitting in the shed getting dusty and dirty. Mark and the boys brought them in from the shed and I got scrubbing. I cannot believe we got our bee order coming in a three days and we have so much snow everywhere. It could potentially be a disaster if we didn't know what we're doing, but we've done this a few times. And we're gonna get these bees a nice, safe, warm hive. It's all gonna work out. Yeah. All right. Is there a honey in these? Not right now, but, but there will be in a couple months. But there might be. Stop. Okay. Well, it's been a few years since we did bees, kind of life and COVID happened. And so I'm inspecting all of our stuff, making sure it's still in order. And Lauren's gonna take it in and make sure it's all cleaned. Generally, okay, some stuff's a little bit dirty. Look at that. We still have a little bit of honey right there. And uh, here's some old brood, a little bit of mold there, a little stuff. Those bees will come and clean all that stuff out. As a beekeeper, you're also kind of like a gardener. You have to adjust the the comb and kind of change things up depending to get what you want. So and this is an old comb that I have. I've scraped some of this stuff off. And then this one, I don't like this comb here. This is drone brood. So these are a bunch of uh, male bees and they don't do almost anything for your hive. So I'm probably gonna scratch that out of there and let the bees rebuild comb that uh, the kind that I want, worker bee. You can tell the difference here. See how big those holes are compared to here? So this is where they leave uh, worker bees, female bees, and these are drone bees, male bees. They do nothing to produce honey. These ones, women, do all the work. So usually you need to get rid of those. Let the bees, it's gonna do a little, the bees will come and recreate some new, new comb right there. So I got to work scrubbing and rinsing all of the boxes in the garage. It is still very cold outside, so this needed to be an inside job.
this is a lot of work. These ones are done. Still got to scrub these ones. This morning, it is time to paint the beehives. We're gonna give them one uniform color. It's also just good to have them a dark color to make them warmer. We have two beehives here. We have a wooden one and a styrofoam one. The styrofoam ones are actually best for Alaska because they keep it more insulated against the cold, but there is a downside. We used to have two styrofoam ones and a bear came and just destroyed one of them. So they are not as tough as the wooden boxes. But here's some remnants of that bear coming to have a little bee snack. It did not get into the beehives. It just tried to push them over. We keep them very secure with ratchet straps. We may even add a little bear fence this year just to keep the bears from getting too curious, but that is the maddest the bees have ever been. Mark had to go kind of push the hives back together after that bear had messed with them and he they were angry. Usually bees are very docile and you can do a lot of things around them, especially if you use smoke, but if a bear has disturbed them, they can get angry. So we do our best to combat that, but that is a challenge here in Alaska. Let's get these things painted. My first item of business is I need to cover the bikes and then this, all these, so they don't get extra paint on them. And then we'll get out my paint sprayer and tackle these boxes. Thankfully, when using this paint sprayer that I got off of Amazon a few years ago, it seems like preparation is 99% of the work. Once we get to actually painting, it will be very quick. If I can remember how to use it. <laughs> it's been a while. Last fall, I bought this gallon of outdoor paint from the whoops section, so it was like 50% off. It's an outdoor paint. We used it to paint our picnic table, and now I'm gonna use it to paint our beehives. This teeny tiny important part was missing. It was back in the tub that I got it out of. I need to be more careful and put it in a plastic bag because this piece is crucial. These are looking awesome. I do think they probably need a second coat, but unfortunately I do have to clean out the paint sprayer. You don't want it to get clogged in between uses. So I'm gonna clean it out and then in about four or five hours, I will come and do a quick second coat just to make sure we give this a good chance of surviving the elements this summer. We can save the paint for this afternoon, but we just need to clean out all the nooks and crannies in the paint sprayer honestly takes more time than the actual painting, but that's, I, I love using the paint sprayer. Let's just talk about a few problems we might run into with the bees this year. They are coming really soon and look at all this snow. Well, we've had snow in the past when we've got our bees, it's never been this much snow and this snow, is like 
rock hard. There's nothing fluffy about this snow anymore. It has condensed and it is just rock solid. We usually put our bees back here, right next to our potato patch. So we're not sure what we're gonna do because once you put a beehive in a place, you're not supposed to move them. You can move them within three feet, but you can't move them much more than that or they will get lost. You can move them up to two miles away because that's their radius of flight. Um, you can like rehome them to a completely new place at night when they're all in the hive, but you can't just like m be moving them all over your yard willy nilly. So that is the problem we're running into. We need a beehive back here. And we're not sure if we're even gonna be able to dig into this stuff. It is just so rock hard. Thankfully, we finally have a week of 40 degree weather in the forecast, but I'm not sure it's gonna be soon enough for these bees. We're gonna have to do some problem solving. So I was just outside and that snow out there is rock hard. What are we gonna do? I don't know exactly. Um, I, do, I don't know, we could dig down potentially and like make a, but that would be really hard because that berm is three feet tall or two, two and a half feet now, but- um, And it's rock solid. Yeah. I mean, the other option is we could put some pallets on top of it and hope it lowers. The challenge with that is like, it doesn't always melt evenly. And then I can see all kinds of things going wrong if we're trying to like jiggle and move a giant beehive. I don't know. I mean, another option is we could, this is just crazy. You build like a platform and like drive them down to the ground so that it's up there and it melts. That's more than I want to do. <laughs> it's like if everything else melts and then that would be standing, but I'm like, I don't know. This isn't really a problem we've had before. There's just no. never been this much yeah, snow. Yeah, there's never been this much snow. I mean, normally you could just kind of, it's a little bit of shoveling or moving stuff around and you're ready to have them out there in like 15 minutes. But I don't know, this is like a bigger project. All right, today is the day to go pick up the bees. We are headed into Anchorage to get them from the supplier that we ordered them from a couple months ago. <laughs> They get the royal treatment, right? Oh, yeah. There we go. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, hey, happy spring Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey. You're doing good. The queen. This is the the queen. It's right below here, hanging in a little cage, and this is their sugar water. So I'm gonna right. ask them real quick how long they've been. Huh? Okay. Don't want to get in an accident with those in your car. <laughs> They seem happy and calm. We got the bees home. Each of these boxes has about 10,000 bees in it and they are clustered around the queen. There's this little tab right here. The queen is inside of a small little box inside of there and they are clustered around her, keeping her at the perfect temperature. This can here in the middle is full of sugar water, which is what they're feeding on to stay alive and hydrated while they traveled from California to Alaska. Because we have some work to do outside still to be able to put the beehives outside, we're gonna leave them in the boxes till tomorrow. So Mark has to add some sugar water. He has equal parts water and sugar mixed up in a spray bottle. We don't want them to get dehydrated. So he's gonna spray the bees with this sugar water to make sure that they have what they need for the next 24 hours. But they do still have some sugar water in those cans. Just kind of misting the edge. And then these bees will work themselves. All the other bees are gonna lick that off of each other. And then turn this around. I'm gonna they'll just lick all that sugar water off each other and do that over here a little bit more. So Mark knows a lot about bees. He took a beekeeping class about beekeeping specifically in Alaska because there are a lot of things that are very different up here with beekeeping because bees are not natural here. It's very hard to winter them over. They tend to die because they get moisture in their hives. Even people that like have had beehives that they thought made it through the winter within the last week, like something happened and they all died. Yeah, there were some people that shared a post where they had a thermometer inside their hive and they could track the temperature of it. And all through the winter when it was 10 below, 20 below zero, their hive stayed about 90 degrees. And then all of a sudden, just a couple weeks ago, I mean, it almost made it to spring. 
the temperatures just dropped precipitously and something happened and they couldn't keep up that temperature and they lost their hive. So bee, wintering over bees is super tricky. I've done it successfully, maybe about 30, 40% of the time. You know, one time we made it all the way till April and a grizzly bear mom and three cubs came through the neighborhood and just destroyed the hives. I mean, other times, you know, that I didn't manage the moisture and they pretty much, they got wet and they froze to death. It's just really tricky. So we don't know what we will do come fall, but for now we're just focusing on trying to have healthy hives through the spring and summer. So this is step one, was picking up our bees, getting our beehives in order, and now we gotta make sure that we can get them outside in the next 24 hours. What happens in the winter when you do winter them over? How do they survive in there? Do they come out? So in the fall, you take all their honey essentially, and you take it and you jar it up. And so essentially, if once you do that, they're all gonna die. So what people do is then they start feeding the bees really heavily. You have to feed them 30 pounds of sugar essentially, mixed with, with water into a syrup. And they turn, in turn, they make that into honey and they use that honey stores to get them through the winter. Then how do they keep warm though in there? Okay. Do, they, do they leave so, the hive? So essentially, as we can see in here, these bees all group up into these, like a cluster. They do the same thing in the hive. And so the queen is at the center and the other bees, they start, it's pretty much just like shivering or moving your body. That's what they do to create heat. And you can feel it when you put your hand here against it. It's actually warmer, warmer. And then the bees that are in the center, they gradually go to the outside. The outside bees work their way to the inside. And so there's continually going like that, keeping, keeping everything warm with the queen at the center. So they're doing that right now, but they also do that in the winter time. Yeah, for sure. And so what they do is they start at the bottom of the hive and you may have a couple boxes and the food's up above. And so they gradually eat their way up into those honey stores, gradually working their way up to the top. And so if they run out of food by the time, you know, before spring comes, then they die. But if they have enough food, they work their way all the way up and up. And then when they start getting honey in the next year, they work their, they just kind of come back down to the bottom. So we are not new beekeepers, but we haven't done it for several years and I have not been that involved. We've always had really small children that Mark and the boys have taken care of the bees. I am going to be more involved this summer, so Mark's gonna be teaching me, but we are ahead of new beekeepers because we have honeycomb already in our boxes. So if you were starting brand new, your bees would need to make the honeycomb in your boxes but we do have some honeycomb already in our frames from previous beekeeping experiences. So they call this drawn out comb. So you can see you have this whole honeycomb. There's a plastic base running through the center of this, but they've built, used wax and built up this comb. And this lighter stuff, this was all honey that we harvested before. This darker stuff, this is where they had eggs growing. And this is mostly a honey one. The ones that are be at the the bottom of the hive will be mostly brood and eggs and it'll be really dark. Since the bees already have this comb, they can just get right to work and start filling that up with honey. If they didn't have that, they have to use a ton of energy to create wax. I think they said it's like six times as much, essentially they're eating their honey to stimulate their wax glands to make this stuff. So this, if you have drawn out comb like this, you're way ahead and you get a lot more honey than if you just started from scratch. Kind of smell it. Would they say like the first year you'd get like, what, a third of the amount of honey if you were just starting from scratch or like even uh, less than that? I, I remember used, it wasn't it very was much. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a lot. Yeah. Like our first year when we had, didn't have what they call drawn out comb or drawn out comb, I think we got like one and a half gallons or something. And then in the subsequent years, we got as much as seven or eight gallons of honey. So, yep. Even with that drawn out comb, they will start getting right to work, just cleaning it all up, making sure their home is in tip top shape to have a good honey season. Bees are amazing when you start to learn about them. So Lauren did a really nice job painting this and I'm kind of inspecting to make sure everything's in order. This right here, this is claw marks from when this hive was a pretty much like investigated, attacked by a black bear last season. Over here, you can see it too. Here's some claw marks right here. Essentially that's, you know, a small black bear. And uh, what we do is you have these two spots here. We have ratchet straps where we ratchet everything together and really lock it together. So even if they pushed it over, unless they totally broke it open, they're not gonna get anything. And so we have these, these styrofoam hives, they take a little damage. Like here's from where another bear was investigating it. And um, so we do the best we can with what we got. 
These styrofoam hives, I found they're quite a bit superior than the wood ones. They just keep the bees a lot warmer than, than the wood ones, and especially that's really helpful up here in Alaska with these cold starts in the spring. It starts getting colder earlier in the year, so. When Mark started keeping bees, he bought two hives. Mm -hmm. Two wooden. Just... Two wooden hives. And then I was at a garage sale and a lady was moving out of state and she had two styrofoam hives. Yeah. And so we kind of now have a mixture of both. This is the nicest they've ever looked though. They've all been very hodgepodge, but that's very normal for beehives to just kind of have a bunch of different colors, but these look nice. They'll give us a good start to the season. So one helpful thing with this color that Lauren painted is it's gonna conduct a lot of heat and it's gonna warm it up. So you up here in Alaska, you wanna have dark hives to attract that heat early in the season so they can help the bees be warm. Down in lower 48, you'd always see that beehives are white or a really light color because they're trying to keep the beehives from getting too hot. We have the opposite problem up here. We wanna keep these bees warm, and so that's why these are dark colored. I really like this color. Yeah, it's cute. Ah, I almost killed myself. Okay. This right here would be somebody's worst nightmare. I'm sure we will get that comment, but are you afraid of getting stung? Uh, not really anymore, but yeah, I wear a suit. And I get stung four or five times a year, but that's about it. Um, just using kind of common sense beekeeping stuff. You might wonder if it's a problem with the kids. I think we've only ever had one, maybe two bee stings for the kids. And it was like they stepped on them on the ground while they were on a piece of clover yeah. or something. We've never had our children be attacked by a bee. Now we do get really bad wasps in Alaska. Those things are nasty and will attack you. But these bees have ten in the past, Hopefully this is a good set, have just been really mellow and docile. The bees that we're doing this year, you can see there's an NW right there. And so this variety they call New World Car Carniolans. And there's a bunch of different varieties of bees. And I selected bees that are on the more gentle side. They may not produce quite as much honey, but they're quite a bit more gentle. They don't get worked up and angry and uh, defensive is what beekeepers call it, where they come out and try and sting people. And as a testament to that, a couple years ago, I was working in the garden and I looked over and baby Everett had a little shovel and he was taking spoonfuls of shovel and shoving it into the beehive in the entrance. And so I like ran and I tackled Everett and ran away with him, but, and he was crying and screaming, but it was because I had jumped on him and grabbed him and not because he was stung. So I was amazed that they were that tolerant back then. And so. Hey boys, I need some help shoveling out the snow to put the bees in their spot. Can you come help, Hunter? Can you come help in it? Give me 20 minutes of shoveling. This is the place. He got it! He got it! <laughs> on the path. Okay, yeah. hopefully my boot will come out with me. Ah. All right. Reminds me of that kid's storybook where they have that steam shovel that dug, dug, dug so far down that he's in the basement and they stays there as the boiler for the... Mike Mulligan. Mike the... Mulligan. Oh, like I think the challenge I think is we have them down here but how are the bees gonna get up and out? So we'll just have to figure that out. But... Where's that old table? Over there. We need to put them on that. Uh, yeah, we could right here. Yeah, and then we can drop them down once it's. I think that's what we need Whoa. to do. Woo! That's a genius idea. Yeah, but we just need to clear it out a little bit more, and that would be perfect.
All right, well, we finally got to climb up out of this hole. Okay. Well, we finally got it all set up. Now we're ready. Once the beehive's dry, we'll get the bees in there tomorrow. Hopefully it'll be nice and warm like this. Probably after work in the evening. That was a lot of work. Yeah, it was. So I'm out here in the garage finishing up some touch-ups with a paintbrush, areas that I could not spray because of certain parts of the bee boxes that you didn't want to get sprayed with paint. We will see you again tomorrow to finish this bee process, getting our beehives ready for the year. Today is the day we are going to be putting the bees in the bee boxes tonight. It is a gorgeous, sunny day outside. Mark and the boys were successful in getting a place cleaned out. So we are going to do the bees tonight. I'm gonna to give them a quick little spritz of sugar water. Mark did it this morning. I'm gonna give him another spritz. The boxes have all dried nicely, so we'll be able to stack them without them sticking together. They look really, really good. I need to go buy a bee suit. We only have one adult bee suit and two children's bee suits, but I need a bee suit of my own. So we're gonna go see if we can find one. waited too long to order a bee suit. It would take forever to get here. So I'm hoping this small local nutrition store has a bee suit today because they do carry beekeeping supplies. XL in the full body suit, but I think I don't care if it's too big. I just don't want it to be too small Well, I ended up leaving empty-handed we opened up the 2XL I was just thinking oh it would be a little bit big this way It was for somebody that was like seven feet tall. It was humongous. You could have fit two of me in the 2XL so did not buy it but she called the owner and he said that they were getting a shipment in tomorrow or the next day so i will be back to get my bee suit and i will just be watching mark put them into the beehives tonight mark went out to the shed and grabbed our bee suits can you show those is that a yeah. kid size one no this is the adult one. Oh, that's an adult one. any weight <laughs> Got this little bale, sort of face mask sort of thing. And <clears throat> originally they were white, but they get dirty when you're working on the hives and all that. So there's one, this will probably fit our younger boys. And then Lauren is gonna wear, we got some gloves for her. And then we have this, uh, this hat it goes on like this. So she can tuck it around her jacket and wear her gloves. So she'll be all set until I get my full suit. All right, I'll get my tools. I need a little suppliers. Yeah. Dad, can I go in the suit? You want to get in the suit? Yeah. Okay, yeah, there's this suit right here. Put this one on. So before we take them outside, we got to put these frames into the boxes. And then we're gonna put the bees right on top of these and they're gonna just crawl right in these and make their new home. But we wanna make sure that they have a place to call home before we dump them in there. So this time of year we put a reducer on here so that the bees kind of stay in and it keeps them warmer. And right at first we want the bees to stay in here and say, hey, this is our home. And so we keep them in there from leaving. After a day or so, I'll pull this out and then they can go freely to, to scavenge. Yeah, that's so what we want. So take it off so we can see what it looks like without it. 
And that's where the bees come in and out of the beehive? Yep, this is where they come in and out. They land right here on this pad. They crawl right on in. And there'll be some guard bees that hang out here all the time, kind of inspecting any of the bees and things that come in. But right now we just need it to be much smaller. We just smaller. need it now to keep it warm and keep them cool and keep them all in there. And, you know, we're just putting them in this brand new environment and they need a day or two to adjust. So. Okay, let's go get the bees. Watch out, Weston. Okay, so we got the queen in here. Oh, she's got a red dot on her. Can I see? Okay, I gotta put her in my pocket though, because I don't want to get cold. So she's got a red dot. She has a dot on her so that we can find her later and check and make sure yep. she's okay. And I'm just putting her in my pocket here to keep her warm for just a minute till I do the rest. Watch out, Weston. So now, now I'm gonna spray these pretty heavy with sugar water. And they can't fly as much. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah. Oh, bees on me. Oh, yeah. Hi, bees. Okay. The bee got out. <laughs> <laughs> the bees don't like that. Yeah. Okay, watch out, Weston. Stay back. trick is I got to get all the bees out because if they stay overnight here they're gonna die. Bees. No it's okay. No, they'll, they'll crawl into the hive. We'll leave it open a little bit. Okay, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put this one here. I'm just gonna put this one in my pocket. Okay, set that down. The bees are gonna kind of crawl onto that. Are they pooping? Guys, watch out. I'm gonna up. What is that all that uh, yellow stuff? That is for Okay, I got to open it up so What's the that yellow stuff. The yellow stuff where? Oh yeah, they're probably pooping. I'm gonna leave this open for right now because I want any of these bees to find their way down into here. So what I did is I had the queen, I pulled her out. There's a little cork that was that was on her uh, in that little cage. I pulled that out and I put that cage down in there. So she's just gonna crawl down into the hive and uh, incorporate herself into this into this hive. So. In the past, we put a marshmallow in the cage and then it takes the workers about two days to ch chew through the marshmallow to get the queen out, but we didn't have a marshmallow today. So we're just hoping she doesn't escape too yeah, soon. need to climb up into there. They'll be okay. We're going to climb up into the hive. You can see them kind of already coming in and out there. So. Yeah, so right here what we have is called a hive top feeder. What we're gonna do is fill this whole thing full up with a couple gallons of sugar syrup, like a one-to-one -one ratio of sugar to water. And the bees, what they do is they climb up through these holes right here, and they come all the way up, and then they can drink out of that sugar water, and they come back down into the hive. And so, obviously there's no plants or anything around right now or flowers for them to feed on, so they'll be feeding on this sugar water right now for the next couple weeks when they're building up their hive. So, Watch out, Weston. I'm gonna open this up real quick. You got it. Okay, I'm leaving. I'm gonna get some. Ready? There we go. For me, the worst part about wearing this net is your face gets itchy, and then it's like trying to scratch it. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to go up underneath, but then you're opening it up for bees to get in. Ooh. I kept trying to scratch my face. So we still have all these boxes in here. We don't need these quite yet, but I am gonna get this cleaned up so we can pull our cars back in the garage. It's still getting really cold at night. I heard something buzzing. I had a bee stuck in my jacket. I probably should have made sure I was cleaned off before I came in. All right, with the Langstrom hives, this is what this type of system's called. You have deep boxes, these bigger ones, and then you have what's called a super. And generally, these big ones are used on the bottom, 
and where all the brood is raised, where the new bees are formed, and then the honey gets installed up here. So you have different frames and different sizes. Kind of imagine like a file folder system. You know, they hang in here like that. You can slide them back and forth and pull them out like you would with the office file folder. Um, and so with these beehives, you don't want to stick all this stuff out there right at once. You want the bees to always feel like they're just almost running out of space. You don't want them to feel like they run out of space, but almost that way. And that means they keep growing, they keep pushing their, their uh, colony bigger and bigger until you get your honey harvest in the fall. <clears throat> and so you can see there's a, these are both honeycomb, they're different colors. This really light color, this has only ever had honey in it, in the top of the hive, and very clear. This one right here has had honey and brood, and you can see how much darker it gets, really dark. This is probably a couple seasons worth of brood rearing in that. So right now we're gonna work on getting all the frames put back into the boxes, and then these are just gonna be stored in the shed until we're ready to add them onto the boxes that we just put outside. They got a lot of work to do out there before we start adding things on, and we're gonna feed them. A lot of beekeepers don't have to feed their bees sugar in the spring like we do, but in the northern climate, these bees, they just, they can't survive unless you do that. So you gotta give them a little bit of augmentation there. So I'm just using pre regular, you could, you could feed them honey or other stuff, but we're just using white cane sugar right here. I'm dumping it into this pot here. Pretty much putting in as much as I can until it won't dissolve anymore. really hot water. I've been running it earlier and gonna let that do its thing for a bit. All right, let's take this out to the bees. Get the couple bees got stuck in there. Okay, this is good. All right, they got food. They got all they need. I need to shut this up a little bit so they don't come out quite so much. There we go. And a smaller entrance. Okay. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good about this. These bees are doing really well so far. We'll just let them do their thing for a couple days and then come back and check on them. I just wanted Mark to answer a few bee questions since it is a bit different here in Alaska and he can give us some insights. The first question I have for him is how many bees do we have now and how many do we hope to have for a good honey harvest? So right now we have about 10,000 bees. That came, they sold it, I think it was like a three and a half pound package is what they gave us. Per hive, 10,000 per hive. Per hive. To get a honey harvest, we need to have about 50 to 60,000 bees per hive. And so that's enough bees to create enough kind of um, surplus energy that they can go out and harvest that honey and put it away in, in the stores. And how and what time frame do we have here in Alaska for that to happen? So it's middle of April right now, and they call the nectar flow is when there's the most abundant flowers and they're producing all this nectar. So that happens in the end of July. And so by the first week of August, we harvest our honey. And if you, that, that's when you have to harvest. If you wait after that, there's still flowers around, but the bees start eating their own honey and you don't get as much of a crop. The next question is how often do we have to check the hives and why do we have to check the hives? So we could just walk away and not check the hives, but there's a lot of things that would go wrong. And so we check the hives every seven days or once a week at the maximum every 10 days and the reason is you want to make sure that the hive's not creating extra queens 
because the hive could swarm and you could lose half your bees like that. They fly out of the hive and go into a hollow of a, a dead tree or something like that. And if your hive swarms, you can say goodbye to any harvest of honey that you're going to get that year. It's happened to me before and it's sad. So when you go in and check, what are you actually checking for? You're, act, you're looking to see if they're making a queen. And if they're making a new queen, you have to get rid of it, right? Yeah, so you have to decide if you want to keep the queen or get rid of it. You almost always get rid of it. Yeah, you want to see if the queen's healthy. Is she laying eggs? Are they putting away honey? Are they running out of space? And if they're running out of space, you need to add blocks or boxes on top of that. Um, early in the season, I need to see, do they need extra food? Are they getting pollen from the trees? There's a lot of different things to check. So we'll be checking them every yeah. about seven to 10 days. We kind of already answered this one, but when do we harvest the honey and how do we do that? So we harvest the honey in the middle of August to the end of August, sometime in there. And then what we do is you need to uh, shake all of the bees out of the boxes and you put the combs in a centrifuge that spins around really, really fast and all that honey kind of goes out to the edge of the drum and then drains into the bottom. There's a funnel that catches it all and then you get it into a big giant five gallon bucket. So to be able to do that, you have to shave off the top of the honeycomb with like a hot knife. We did it one time or did we do it more than once? Twice. We did it twice? I did it two years. We did it two years. It's very messy, very sticky. We usually have lots of kids around. Then we found out there was an extraction service where you have to pay just a very small fee and they will extract it for you in their really nice warmed up room. And it, they do all the messy stuff for you and you can just drop them off and pick them up a couple days later. So we typically do that now. It's just easier and then we bring it home and put it in our own jars, but they'll, they'll get it into a bucket for us. So there are options for that. And so we're hoping to get anywhere from five to seven or eight gallons of honey between those two hives. If we have a really poor year, maybe like two and a half gallons for two hives. But if we have a great year, it could be up to seven or eight gallons of honey. And really it depends on the weather, the flowers. If we have a rainy, if, it, if we have a rainy summer, it's going to be hard. But if we have a stretch where it's really hot and dry for Alaska, um, we can expect a pretty good harvest. So last summer we did not do bees, but we had the most beautiful June on record. Like it was hot. There were lots of flowers and then people it was harvested, like, right? It was like record amounts of, of honey that they were getting and they were harvesting multiple times during the summer. That was totally unheard of before. And, and then it rained the whole month of July. So people were really happy that they'd already harvested their honey. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens this year. Time will tell. We will bring you along so you can see what happens with our honey periodically throughout the summer. We'll probably bring you along when we're doing a hive check and show you what it's all about. But we're really excited to be doing this again together as a team. I think Weston will be involved. He was really into it today. He kept just saying, I love these bees. And <laughs> Bennett was checking it all out too, even though he didn't have a bee suit on. So I'm sure we'll have company out there and we'll bring you along too. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again real soon for more of this Alaska life. Bye. So Mark told me this one's 2019. This was 2020. This was the last year that we did bees. This one is so good. It's like turned into creamed mm -hmm. honey. Oh, I agree. And this one always had the, almost like a caramel apple taste to it. I don't know what the bees were eating when they put away this, but it has a different taste for sure. You can, every year has a different taste. And just a different consistency because this one like moves around. You can like create a bubble in it. Watch. Whereas this one is just solid. It originally was like that, but it crystallized really quick. Higher water content, is that what they say? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think this is superior. I like that when it cr is creamed because it spreads really nicely. Some of the, some, I think they say there can be like little impurities, like bits of pollen or other stuff that'll start the catalyzation or catalyze the crystal formation. And yeah, this one's really good. Hopefully we'll get enough mm. honey to share with some of you. <laughs> Maybe future giveaways. Okay, we're just like... <laughs> I know. So we don't eat all of our honey. We have some extra and we like to share it with some friends. 
there's a church fundraiser coming up for some camps for the youth. And so I donated a couple jars of this that they're going to do in a silent auction and great gift. We have all that we want and then it's good to share. And sometimes we will even sell enough honey to pay for our bees. We've done that in the past yeah. because like I said, it didn't used to be 450 bucks. No. When you started, how much do you think they were? I think it was like $170 per package and now it's about 250 per package. So yeah, it's really come up a lot. Yeah. And the price of sugar has come up because you got to feed them, you know, a couple bags of sugar for and this and all that. So yeah, I when in the fall there is a big market for the fresh Alaskan honey. Locals tend to like local honey because it, it can help with allergies because it has local pollen in it, um, and people just like good honey and it's yeah. just superior. So back when I did this more regularly, I would easily sell enough honey to pay for our costs though. And that was usually the goal. So we could sell like at least half of the honey and still we'd have Plenty. three or four gallons of honey to do whatever we wanted with. And we'll see what we do yeah. this year. Maybe we'll save it to give to some of you. I want to go have some toast now or something. I know. I was, like, that's what I was thinking. Like, it needs like peanut good. butter and honey toast. Mm. It sounds good. My jar is almost empty at work. I didn't bring a new one. All right. Love you, hon. Love you too. You didn't make any bee jokes. Like 